here is how you can absolutely master the camera app on iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and this is my iPhone 14 Pro. Alongside it, I have my iPhone 14 Pro Max. Everything that I demo here on the iPhone 14 Pro will apply to the iPhone 14 Pro Max as well. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's start with some basic controls. The volume buttons located on the side can act as the shutter button, which can be really handy in a variety of different situations. And it's easier to press those than the on-screen shutter button. So if you are holding your camera and you have your shutter buttons there, you can click these rather than this. So let's go ahead and test it out. By default, I can press the top or the bottom button to take a photo. If I uh, press and hold, it'll go ahead and start capturing a video. And keep holding and as soon as I'm done, let go and it's captured that video. If I move into camera settings, I do have another option. I can toggle on use volume up for burst. So if I toggle this on, go back to the camera app, now the bottom button will capture a photo or hold for a video, and the top one, if I hold it, it'll start capturing burst photos as well. Let's move on to the various zoom levels. On the iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max, you can move between 0.5 times zoom, one time zoom, two time zoom, or three time zoom. These are all of your optical level zoom, which means there is no loss in quality as you move between these three or these four zoom levels. The 0.5 using that ultra wide angle lens, the one time zoom uses that main lens, the two time zoom uses the middle 12 megapixels of that main lens, and three times is using the telephoto lens. But if you tap on any of these and slide your finger, you can open up a wheel that'll give you more granular control over your zoom levels. You can move all the way out or all the way in. On an iPhone 14 Pro, you can go up to 15 times digital zoom. So you have three times optical zoom and 15 times digital zoom, or you can choose anything in between. Once you find the zoom level that you want, you can actually go ahead and pull down on the wheel to release it. Alternatively, you can pinch and zoom with your fingers on the screen, but I find it just doesn't quite work as well. It's a lot easier to use this little wheel, and then when you're done, slide down or it'll go away automatically. When controlling the camera, you can also use Quick Take. So you can tap on the shutter to take a photo. Perfect. Or you can tap and hold, and now you start recording a video. This video will keep recording until you let go. Or if you tap and hold and then move to the right, you can lock it into video, and now it is actively recording that video. By the way, while recording, you can capture a still photo by tapping that additional shutter button. So you can tap to take a photo, tap and hold to record video, tap and hold and move to the right to capture or lock it into video, or I can pull to the left and capture burst photos. So those are all of your options to quick take photos, videos, and burst photos with the shutter button. Now let's take a look at some more advanced controls. At any given time, you can have a few different settings located here towards your top of your display. Right now in this well-lit area, I do have an option for the flash to turn that on, off, or auto, and I have the option for live photos. If it was a little bit darker, you can see we have the uh, night mode option will appear up there, and if I enabled raw photos, that icon would appear here as well. More on that in just a moment. But there are other controls you can access. If you tap on this little carrot icon, a control bar will appear here at the bottom. So this is a little bit redundant because you do have your flash controls here and your live photo controls are also here, but you have more controls too. So we have photographic styles, which was new with the iPhone 13 series. There are several different ones to choose from, rich contrast, vibrant, warm and cool as well as standard. And if you find one that you like, uh, Vibrant's pretty good, Rich Contrast is good, you can also make adjustments down here by moving back and forth to choose the exact one you like, really dial it in. And when you're done, uh, you can reset it by tapping that one to reset to the original settings there or continue to tweak it. Whatever you are happy with, it'll go ahead and be set and you'll see it highlighted in yellow if that uh, filter or the photographic style is enabled. Other ones to be aware of are the aspect ratios. You can choose from four to three, square for posting maybe on social media, and 16 by nine or nine by 16 if sideways. Um, and then we can go ahead and go back to your typical four to three ratio, 
We have exposure control so you can lighten or darken the photo automatically right from the time that you are capturing that shot. You have a timer mode for three or 10 seconds. And then we have filters. So filters you can apply afterwards, but you can apply them as well when you are capturing the photo just so you can see a preview of it basically when you're snapping that shot. So those are all of your controls here at the bottom. As I said, you might have that dark mode option, so if I make the screen a little bit darker, you will see the dark mode or the night mode option up here. So you can have this on auto, which it is by default, but you can also slide this to control the amount. So if we were in a stable position here and it needed to increase that shutter, you can go all the way up to 30 seconds, I believe, as the longest you can do a night mode photo on. This works not only in regular mode, uh, regular photo mode, but it works for time lapses and portraits as well. Before we get too much more into the camera app, I have to thank my sponsor for this video, ESR. ESR is here to level up your charging tech. This is ESR's Halo Lock 3-in-1 charger with CryoBoost. It's unique because it utilizes active cooling to prevent your phone from getting too warm, optimizing charging speeds, and giving you better performance than even Apple's MagSafe chargers. Plus the 3-in-1 version allows you to charge your Apple Watch and AirPods at the same time as your iPhone. ESR also has a handy MagSafe battery pack that uses USB-C and has a built-in kickstand. So when it magnetically attaches to your iPhone, you can prop it up to take a FaceTime call or to watch some video. Even take a photo. If you need a case, ESR has you covered as well with the iPhone 14 series. They come in both MagSafe and non-MagSafe enabled versions. The clear case is great and has built-in tech to prevent yellowing. My favorite case though is the kickstand case that literally utilizes the camera ring as a pop out kickstand to prop up your iPhone anywhere you are and it still supports MagSafe. Follow the links down below in the description and get 20% off using a combination of the promo code and the clipped coupon. Thanks again to ESR for sponsoring this video. Let's talk about macro photography. With the iPhone 13 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro, you can tap or you can capture incredibly close-up photos of subjects. If I bring something close like this uh, this little faux plant here, and we're really in close to the camera lens, you're gonna see it's still able to focus despite the fact that it's so close to it. Now you'll also notice this little toggle here in the left-hand corner letting me know that macro mode is enabled. And I can tap that to turn it off. And you can see now it's no longer able to focus as close as it was before. So if I jump over to that uh, ultra wide, you can see again, it's getting close there. You can change that by going back in to settings. Inside of settings, you can turn on an option for macro control. Right now, that button is appearing, but if we turn that off and we go back, that icon is gone, and we bring something close, it's gonna automatically switch into macro mode. I won't have that option to toggle on or off. If something gets close to the camera, it'll immediately move into macro mode and allow me to capture that photo without having to touch the button. It's just up to you whether you prefer to have that additional control or not. The last settings that I want to discuss for photography is going to be raw photos. If we move back into the settings application, we go near towards the top. We have an option for formats. Inside of formats, I can enable Apple Pro Raw Photography. Pro Raw photos capture at much higher resolutions and they don't have nearly as much compression because they're not saved as JPEGs, they're saved as raw photos. So they're just simply a lot larger files, completely uncompressed. And they can bring out additional details in low light shots, um, in the highlights, things like that. When you're taking a Pro Raw photo with iPhone 14 Pro, you can choose between 12 megapixel photos, which is your, your standard, or 48 megapixel photos. These can be 75 megabytes for a 48 megapixel photo. These things are simply massive versus a couple megs for a standard non-raw 12 megapixel photo. So if we go back to the camera app, let's see what that looks like. You can see we have a new toggle here at the top. It just says raw and it's crossed out because right now we're shooting in standard mode, not a raw photo. If I tap on raw, now raw photos are enabled. If I tap this, it's captured a raw photo. Going back into the photos app, the actual photos, I can see a tag right here at the top that tells me that this is a raw photo. Moving up, I can see additional information. It's a 48 megapixel, 43 megabyte raw photo. Most people won't need raw photography, but it's nice to have it, especially when you're shooting at 48 megapixels. It's a lot of megapixels in raw, and you end up with a lot of grain in your photo. So don't simply use this 
every time because you're going to burn through your storage and you're not necessarily going to get a better photo every time unless you know what you're doing and plan to further edit those photos. Since it's not a wholly new feature, I'm not going to go too much into portrait mode, but portrait mode still exists with iPhone 14 Pro. Basically, you bring your subject into frame, it'll give you information here at the top, like, okay, move a little bit further away. Once it is in portrait mode, you'll see it highlight here at the bottom, and you can change between different filters, contour light, stage light, uh, stage light mono, high key light mono, just depends on what you're shooting. Portrait mode is really neat. You can choose between one times, two times and three times zoom levels on the iPhone 14 Pro instead of just one and three times, which I believe is what your options were on the previous generation iPhone 13 Pro. That brings us to video modes. We're gonna go ahead and use this bar down here at the bottom to change between our modes. We switch between uh, photos, portrait, panoramas. We can swipe to the left to get to the video modes, including video, cinematic, slow-mo, and time-lapse. In this case, we're just gonna go over to standard video mode. You still have your options for zooming in and out, and you have options for frame rates up here in that top right hand corner. Right now I'm shooting at 4K at 24 frames per second. Tapping on any of those, now I'm in HD, so 1080p, 30 frames per second, 4K, tapping on the frame rate, choose between 24, 30, or 60 frames per second here in standard video mode. If we move back into settings, I wanna show you something that you can also do. You can shoot in ProRes video, so similar to Pro Raw Photos, uncompressed takes an enormous amount of storage. You need actually 256 gigs of storage when shooting inside of ProRes. If we move back to the camera app, you can see ProRes icon at the top, similar to the raw photography that we had already looked at. Going back in settings, we're gonna turn off ProRes, but I also wanna show under record video, we have options for down here at the bottom, which is HDR video. So you can shoot HDR video with this turned on. This can shoot in Dolby Vision, and it looks amazing when you're watching on an HDR display. Though, if you plan to move this to your computer and edit, you will have to adjust the highlights down because it's going to be way overblown when shooting in HDR. If you're sharing on social, on your phone, on your TV, Apple TV, all that stuff, HDR is good. Just remember, if you plan to edit it on your Mac, uh, you might need to turn that down unless you plan to produce an HDR video. One new feature here with the iPhone 14 series is called action mode. So we're moving into the video section here and we have a new icon located on that far right hand side. Let's move our subjects a little bit closer into frame. Um, but we have that new option there that looks like a guy running. So if I tap on that, I've enabled action mode. Action mode shoots at typically one time zoom, but it does zoom in a bit. So you will have a little bit of a crop factor when shooting inside of action mode. It'll record at 2.8K resolution and it can go up to 60 frames per second. Right now it's 24, but I can go 30 or 60 when shooting in this action mode. Action mode does need quite a bit of light though, so that is important to realize when trying to shoot in action mode, it needs to be a very well lit area. If you like, and you go back into the settings application, you can choose to enable action mode lower light but this will decrease the stabilization of your shot. So if you're in a brightly lit area, you can leave this off. But if you're in some place lower light and you still want to record in action mode, be sure to turn this on. Here are some sample footage of running around, shooting in action mode. It, it seriously did amazingly well, running through the yard, chasing Mosby around. This footy footage was so bouncy as I ran and it stabilized so remarkably well. A gimbal still might be better, but for this, it's impressive. The last video mode to talk about is cinematic mode. Cinematic mode got an upgrade with the iPhone 14 Pro. Basically, it allows you to change your focus from things that are close up and things that are far away. You can do these pool effects that are just oh so neat. So I can tap on the subject that's like up close. Now the plant's in focus. I can tap back here. It'll move to the camera. You can see that pool effect that it did, and I can do it even while I'm recording. So the Nikon's in focus, but I want to move up here to the plant, tap the plant. Now that plant is in focus. It looks really neat. With the iPhone 14 Pro, this mode was upgraded. So now it can actually shoot in 4K at up to 24 or 30 frames per second. There's no 60 frame per second option for cinematic mode, but Apple did at least upgrade to 4K resolution, which it did not have before. Similar to portrait mode, you can adjust the amount of depth effect that you have. Here with this little slider that pulls up the aperture controls. These are your f-stop values, typically shooting here at f2.8. Once you've recorded your footage, you can edit it inside of the Photos app. I can go up, I can tap on Edit, 
and I can actually see where that focus was changed. So focus on the camera, moving forward, I can add a dot right there, or it already has a dot there, where it pulls the focus up here to the plant. This will work with anything, pets, objects, of course, people, all of that. And you can see what objects are being tracked right here with that focus indicator that's being highlighted. So right there on the plant, there on the camera, and you can do so retroactively. So here I can now tap on the camera, add an additional focus point there. So it goes from the camera to the plant and then back to the camera by the end. At any point, you can tap on the aperture control right there and adjust how much blur is going on so I can really blur it out if I'd like to or make everything more in focus. You have complete control and you can change the focus after shooting this video. There has been big changes to cinematic mode. It's much more reliable than it has been in the past. I'm very happy with the changes that Apple has uh, made to cinematic mode here on the iPhone 14 Pro. So that covers it. Those are the best ways to master the camera on the iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max.